what is the most consequential verse in the Bible? That's the question today. Now, I know that there's probably a lot of different opinions on this, and you could almost argue that every verse in the Bible is consequential. But in my humble opinion, it's hands down Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And you know, I probably should have said verses, but that's okay. Matthew 28, 19 is some like to call in theological circles, obviously the Great Commission. And But you know what I like to call it, folks? I like to call it the Great Mission because... The reason this is so consequential is, to give you some background, Jesus is uh, fixing to ascend up into heaven. The resurrected Jesus is given this to the disciples. So basically, he's giving them a mission. And that's what's so cool about this verse. And this is what we're going to do a deep dive on this today. And I want you to take your Bible today and go to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 28. Verses 19 and 20, and I, as I read God's word, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, folks, I just those are some powerful, powerful letters. And as you read that, I know that you probably saw that those are in red letters in your Bible. So that was spoken by Jesus. But what I want you to take away from this as we kind of dissect this verse and, and do a deep dive in it, I want you to take a look at a couple of things. Did you catch the two action verbs? Yeah, I said that. There is action here, and Jesus has given us a mission. He's telling us to go all right, and he's also telling us to make. Now, when you think about this, go and make. Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, years ago when we started the Go Bowl Network, this was the this was our this was the inspirational verse to, to establish our mantra, uh, "Go bold." And and so you know, if you can't go without being bold, and you can't go with you can't be bold without going. And so, so Jesus didn't say sit and, 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 and sleep. He said, go and make. These are action verbs. Now, because Matthew uh, 28, 19 uh, is, the, a, is one of the, in, in fact, it is the most critical task that Jesus ever gives us. Because in order to make disciples, you're going to have to share the gospel. You're going to have to witness uh, and, and share the good news of Jesus. And but you also have to take that a step further and make those disciples. And many times, guys, we don't do that very well. And that's a whole separate podcast. But um, but Jesus tells us to go and make disciples. And and it, Jesus is saying here right now, uh, if you're going to be a Christian, you must be a disciple. And a lot of times, guys, we don't we don't we kind of gloss over that fact. Many times we just think, well, I'm a Christian, I'm good, I'm going to go to heaven, and we forget about that whole other go and make disciples of what, all nations. He's telling everyone who claims to be a Christian and saved by his grace that you must go and make. And when he says something else, he says nations. Now, when he's talking about that, whatever nation you lived in, would you live in uh, France or Canada or America? or Israel, or Germany, or Ukraine, or Russia, go and make a disciple in that nation. Now, you're going to hear some nonsense sometimes about uh, some from the the socialist camp or the communist camp or the Marxist camp, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna talk to you, tell you that uh, uh, if you go and make disciples of all nations, that you're being a Christian nationalist. No, you're not. Okay, get over that nonsense. Okay, go out and make disciples. This is yeah, you're gonna make that. You're be proud that you could be in a Christian nation, and that's exactly how our nation was established. But Jesus is taking the step further. Whatever nation that you're in, you want to go make it Christian, okay? You want to go make disciples. That is what he commanded us to do. And whether it's in your state, uh, in my state of Oklahoma or the t community you live in, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, when he said that, he was talking about all nations, not just some, okay? And the other thing that he's talking about is, that when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you go make disciples, then 
you're telling the world that you're going to go plant Jesus's flag, okay, wherever you're at, and you're going to give Satan zero quarter. Yes, that's what it means when you go and make uh, disciples. You're going to have to fight Satan in every corner of the earth, wherever you're at. But once you, and Jesus is saying, basically, once you receive my grace, you've got to get more into the kingdom to expand God's kingdom. And and see, this is many times we we kind of we kind of leave that out. We 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 look at our church numbers and we look at our great building projects and we look at, uh, well, we're gonna have a we're gonna have bucko night. And we're gonna do these neat things, and that's all good and fine. But the bottom line is what Jesus told us to do is go make disciples, get your brothers and sisters into the gate. The other enthralling consequential aspect of this verse is that I find fascinating. It's when he talks about in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, you guys know that you know I say that and I close that with every baptism I do, and many preachers do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you know what Jesus is doing here? He is revealing the Holy Trinity. And I'll tell you guys, wherever you're at in your Christian life, whether it be... Um, uh, mature in your walk or, or, um, or uh, uh, young in your walk with Christ. Understanding and knowing the Trinity is very hard. Now, Jesus is going to tell his disciples he's going to talk about giving them a gift, and he's going to talk about giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit And when he goes away. So, so what he's basically telling them, he is going to give you his spirit. He's going to arm you to the teeth with that. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of God descends upon you, and he stays with you forever. And because here's the thing, folks, it's going to be the Holy Spirit that you're going to need to go out and make disciples. Yes, and you're going to have to share, share the gospel. And here's what I want you guys to understand. It is the Holy Spirit. Now, you're, not, you're, going, to, you're going to have some losses. You're going to have some wins when you go out and make disciples, I promise you. Uh, you're going to have people look at you like you're crazy. But here's what I want you to do. Don't get discouraged. Okay, because that person getting saved or not is not up to you. You just got to do, you got to go and make. Let the Holy Spirit of God, he will be the one that, 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 that will save that lost soul. Okay? Now, you see, being a Christian and making disciples and, and not making disciples, okay, it's kind of like a bird dog that doesn't hunt. I mean, I mean, you might as well not even have a bird dog if he doesn't hunt, right? Or similar to a soldier or a general in battle or a colonel in battle and, and that's a commander that doesn't like to fight. I mean, I mean, what's the sense of being a commander? A Christian does not go bold and make disciples is basically a Civil War version of George McClellan, okay? Because here's the thing. We are, we are commanded we are commanded to go bold. Now, if we are a church and, 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 and we are part of his grace, and that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do for our community. That's why God plants a church in a little town like ours. And that's why he'll plant a church in a big city uh, to, to so he can go make disciples. And the whole part of being at church is getting those folks in church so we can make disciples of all nations. Yes, we have a, a incredible, incredible task to do while we're here on this earth, and that is to make disciples. And, you know, guys, think about it. You know, here's the thing. If you think about it, one of the only tasks that you'll never be able to do in heaven is make disciples and share the gospel. And think about that. The only time you're going to be able to do that is when you're on earth. And I know we're not going to have regrets in heaven, but we do on earth. And I think Jesus wants us to go and make disciples because, you know, guys, he commanded us to. He commanded us to. It is a task. It's a mission to go out. And we must be that dog in the fight. We have to expand God's kingdom. And Jesus gives this mission to all Christians. And I hear it right now. You know, I hear some people say, well, brother, I'm not a preacher and I'm not a missionary. Okay, well, but you, he's given you a gift whether that's singing, whether it's teaching, whether it's a business person, okay? Why not go invite that new family in your neighborhood uh, to dinner and share Christ with them and then invite them to church or take them on a Wednesday night or, or uh, go have lunch with somebody at your work? 
that that's uh, and then maybe it's 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 taking the time and taking the trouble to to reach out to unbelieving people. That's what he's saying here, folks. Start frequenting those places of businesses and that you see all the time. Maybe it's that lady at the cleaners. Maybe it's that that waiter that waits on you that serves your coffee. Okay. A lot of times I will try to do that when I'm out eating after church sometimes and. Maybe it's just asking a, a young waitress that probably doesn't make a lot of money, hey, can I pray for you today? And then after we're done, give her a nice tip and, and then and then share your business card. Okay? This is how Jesus, when he envisioned us to go out and make disciples of all nations, this is how we do it. When somebody is down, go in there and say, Hey, brother, can I pray for you? You would be amazed what that happens, what happens to that person then just maybe you might be able to share the gospel and then just maybe that person can accept Jesus Christ and then you can start making a disciple of that person and then that person can go make a disciple. That's how it works. You see, God gives you a skill. He gives you a vocation. He gives you a gift. And turn those networks of relationships throughout your life will allow you to make disciples. You are blessing others through your work. And of course, uh, I'm not talking about doing anything inappropriate. And I'm also saying that I understand that you have to be strategic a lot of times in America now. But notice also what he said. He said, I observe all things that I commanded you. You see, Jesus didn't ask us to do this. He commanded us to do this. I'm reminded uh, of a quote by a man named, a pastor named Richard Baxter. He was a 17th century British pastor. And he said something that's really stuck with me, and I really think about it every time I read this verse. Lord, help me to preach like a dying man to dying men. Let that sink in. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is a bold word from a very bold book. And God bless you, friends, and go bold. <laughs>